As I mentioned previously, I'm not going to take the time to go through the code of writing some array-based priority queues. I leave that as an exercise for the student. I think it is actually a good thing for, for you to do to practice. Um, I'm also assuming that you are more comfortable working with arrays than you are with linked lists, and therefore it's more important for me to show you the code for the linked list than it is for the array-based version. But I do want to talk about how you would implement an array-based version of a priority queue. So as with before, there are basically two ways that this can be implemented. One is with a sorted priority queue. If we do a sorted uh, array for our priority queue, it would look something like this. All the values are in sorted order. And when I add an element into this, it would have to go through and find the right location. And as it's finding location, it would copy things down. So the 15 would move, let's say I was in queuing a five. The 15 would move down, the 12 would move down, nine, seven, six, and that would make space. It would look at the four, say five goes after that, and it would stick the five where the six currently is. And all the other values would be pushed back. Clearly that's an order in operation. If we do the kind of circular trick we did with a regular queue, we could make it so that dequeuing was just kind of moving a, an indicator for the front of our queue down one. Uh, and then when we go past the end, we'd come to here. We'd do the same thing we did with our circular priority queue. So we could make it so that the dequeue was an order one operation. It's basically just moving a pointer forward or an integer forward from one element to the next. But the in queue for the sorted one has to do order in work. And not only has to do order in work, it has to do order in memory moves. And that, that can be significant. Turns out that reading memory and writing memory don't necessarily take the same amount of time. Of course, there's also issues with things called cache coherency and whatnot. So if you really want to know what's fastest, you have to test it because it can depend a lot upon the hardware that you're running on and the details of, of the values in your problem. What if it were an unsorted array-based priority queue? Okay, well, let's do make a few changes here just so that Sure, that'll work. Clearly unsorted values. Here I would keep track of how many elements I have. Um, I don't really have a front or a back. What we'd have to do is we'd have to sort or search through this just like we did with the unsorted list we have to search through the whole thing and find the highest priority now I am assuming low numbers for high priority here that's what I had before with that one up in front uh, once again the reason for that is often priority queues are based upon time and smallest times happen first so if I were to uh, implement this using a uh, an unsorted uh, array. Adding is very easy. I want to enqueue something. Oh, sure. Let's just put, I don't know, a six there. And then number of elements goes up to nine. Okay, so enqueuing is very fast. It's an order one operation. And as long as we double the size of our array and we have to grow it, it'll be amortized cost of order one, just like it was for our non, uh, for our regular queue. What about dequeuing? Well, if I go through and I find the highest priority element, it's the two. And there are two ways that you can get rid of this two. One is we could shift everything down into its position. But if we're willing to relax that condition that in the case of ties, I want to take the thing that's been there the longest. If I'm willing to say in the case of ties, I don't care what I'm getting. All I care about is highest priority there's a tie in highest priority, just give me something with that priority. If I'm willing to relax that, when I get rid of this two, you know, I can't just leave a blank. That's, that's not allowed. So I would have to do, I still have to do a search of the whole thing. I can't get away from that. Um, but if I'm, kind of the naive way to do this is to take every element and shift it down one which now means that after I've completed this, after I've done order in things for the search, I now have to do another order in memory moves. There's a better way to do this if we don't care 
if things have kind of the normal Q uh, order in the case of ties. And that is, let's just take this last element, that 6, and let's put it right there. Okay. Because once again, the DQ has to do a complete search. It's going to wind up finding this 4, whether the 4 is there or there. It doesn't matter. Okay. The only reason why we would need to preserve order is if we cared about the the what happens in the case of tied priorities and turns out many implementations of priority queues don't guarantee what happens in the case of of tied priorities so we're not going to to worry about it that just gives you a quick kind of figurative description of what happens with array based priority queues once again i strongly encourage you to go and and write it uh, there's only four methods so write both the sorted and the unsorted array-based priority queue to make sure that you understand how they work. And then, of course, for both the linked list versions and the array versions, write some test code. Make sure that everything is doing what you expect it to be doing. It will also help to make sure that you understand how to use these priority queues in your code.